Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to see how to set up doors and windows for dynamic lighting in Roll20. This will allow you to create windows that your players can interact with so they can look out of a building but not leave the building until they click on the windows icon to open it, and then they can jump out. And it will also allow you to create door icons so that your players will easily know where doors are, and you can choose to have those doors be unlocked so your players can click on them to open them, or they can be locked so that your players will know they need to make some sort of a check in order to try to open the door. You can even set up secret doors, and I'll show you how that works as well. Note that because we're using a feature that relies on dynamic lighting, a plus or pro account is required in order to do this. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Okay, so here I am logged in as a GM to this game. I've already loaded in a map. I've already started my dynamic lighting. I've set up all the walls. I've set up my light sources. So now what I want to do is set up the actual windows and doors. And just so we can kind of see what it looks like to the players as we make these changes, I'm going to pop up my player's view here. And so as you can see right now, my player can see through all of the windows and doors. There are no barriers to their vision right now inside this cabin, aside from the regular walls. So let's go ahead and let's set some of these up. So let's start out with the windows. You want to make sure that you're on the dynamic lighting layer, which I am, and then you're going to click on this button right here, and you're going to click place window. Now you have an option here. Do you want your window to be locked, in which case your players won't be able to open it, or do you want it to be opened by default? I'm just going to leave the defaults here. It's neither going to be locked nor open, so it'll be a shut window that my players could open. And my cursor is changed to this window icon. I can just drag this to wherever I want and click, and now it placed the window. I can do that again over here. There we go. And now I've got a vertical window over here, so I'm going to click, and then I'm going to switch to my select tool here, and then I can just move my dynamic lighting lines to line up with the walls, and there we go. Now, if you look from the player view, Nothing looks any different, and that makes total sense because the windows are transparent. The players can see through them. But because the windows are going to block movement, my player now cannot leave the house without opening the window first. And just to show you what I mean by that, if I try to drag my token out this door, which is open, you can see my player can move right out. But if I try to drag through this window, which is shut, I cannot leave the house through that window. But if I click on the window to open it, you can see now it's changed this little, looks like two panes going up. Now I can drag my token right through. So your players can open and shut windows if the windows are locked. So let's make one of these windows locked here and I'll say this is a locked window. And now I go over to it and I try to open it you can see that the window gave a little shake there, and now it has this lock icon over it. So now my player needs to make a check with thieves tools or something else in order to open the window and get out that way. So that's windows. Doors work pretty much the same way. We're going to go back to that button on the toolbar, and we're going to say place door. And again, you've got some options. Do you want the door to be secret? Do you want it to be locked? Do you want it to be open? Let's say that we want to place just a regular door here. It's neither locked nor secret. My cursor is now changed to this door icon. I can just click. Just like before, it's placed the door for me. I can use the select tool to reposition things a little bit if I want. There we go. I'm going to move it a little bit more to the left. And you can resize these as well so I can make it longer or shorter if you'd like. I'm going to have a little bit of overlap here just to make things easy for myself. Uh, same thing with the windows. You can do this too. Make them wider or narrower as you need. If you need to delete a door, just click on it and then press the backspace key on your keyboard and that will delete it for you. Uh, and if you make a mistake and you delete something you didn't want to, you can press Control Z on your keyboard to undo that deletion. I'm just going to repeat that process. Let's set up our next door to be a locked door. So we'll go back to the button here. We're going to say this will be a locked door. I'll drop that in place. There we go. And again, I can reposition it as I need. This door, you can see it has a little lock icon on it. I know that. Players won't know that though right away. Finally, we'll set up our last door here. Let's make that a secret door. I will select place door one more time. We'll make this one secret and locked. And we'll just drag that on there. 
and then place it accordingly. There we go. Okay. And you can see over in my player's view, these changes are reflecting as well. So my player knows that there is a door here and a door here, but there's no icon indicating that there is a door over here. So if they want to, they can move up to this door here and they can click on it. And that opens the door right up because this one was neither locked nor trapped or anything like that. But then they move over and they say they want to try and open this door. Just like what happened with the window, the door shook a little bit, gives a lock icon now, so my player knows they need to make some sort of a check. And then over here, maybe they say, oh, hey, I want to look to see if there's a secret door. You say, yes, there is, you found it. So you uncheck this secret option and then that makes the door visible to them and then they can open it from there. You can see that I kind of missed my lines a little bit, so uh, I can just make those a touch wider on the dynamic lighting layer, there we go, and tighten those up, and that way, now my player can't see <laughs> any little snippets there. So you do wanna make sure that you've got everything lined up properly, do a couple of checks before you actually start your game. Now, one other thing I wanna mention about this is that the door icons are accessible to you as the GM from any layer. So if we're on the objects and tokens layer, maybe we're running a fight or we're doing something else, all we have to do is click on the door's token and we can make it opened. So we can just open it up right there, or we can close it and lock it, whatever it is we need to do. So you don't need to jump to the dynamic lighting layer to manipulate the doors. You just need to use the dynamic lighting layer to set the doors up for the first time. And then from there, you can be on any layer, whether it's the GM layer, the token layer, the map layer, it doesn't matter. You can interact with the doors from any layer that you're in, and that just saves a whole lot of time and makes this a much smoother process while you're playing. So at this point, you may be saying, well, Nick, this is all great, but I have a whole bunch of maps that use the old way of dynamic lighting doors. Is there a way for me to convert those to use this new way? And the answer is yes, assuming you have a pro account. So provided you have a pro account, you can use this mod that a user named Groach has put together. And this allows you to turn existing dynamic lighting doors and windows into the new kind of dynamic lighting doors and windows. And I'll put a link to this post down in the video's description. But basically what you wanna do is go out to Groach's GitHub page, click on raw here, Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it, and then in your game's settings page, you're gonna to wanna to go to new script and paste in the code, and we'll just call this path to door and window, and we'll save that. Now, when you install this script, it's going to create this handout, path to door or window UI. Click on that, and go to the bio and info tab, that will give you the instructions on how to use the script as well as the settings that the script is making use of. So let's use an example here so you can see how this works. I'm gonna minimize the handout just by double clicking on it and we'll scoot it down here. And I'm gonna go into a new map. So I'm gonna jump over to this Dwarven Barracks map. Now this map is from a free module put out by Kobold Press called the Dwarven Barracks from the Scarlet Citadel. I'll put a link down in the video description below. But as you can see, I'm on the dynamic lighting layer here and we've got the old way of doing doors where the doors are just an orange line on the dynamic lighting layer. And so if I wanted to open the door for a player, we would have to jump to the dynamic lighting layer, move this line or delete it, and then jump back to whatever layer we were on previously. So I wanna use the new way of working with doors because it's a lot easier. And again, I can work with it from any layer. So how do we go about switching this? Well, the first thing we need to do is go into the path to window or door UI handout again, and we're gonna go over to the settings tab and we need to define what color line our doors are. And so right now you can see that the locked doors are set to be this orange, which actually corresponds to this orange right here. So that's all set for me. But basically what that would mean is the script is going to convert any orange line to be a locked door. Now that may work absolutely fine for you, but let's say that you want some of your doors to be unlocked. So for example, in this module in room 306 over here, the door is supposed to be unlocked. Well, I can just go through, I can convert everything and then come back and unlock the door. That's one easy way to do it. Or I could change the line color here to be the unlocked door color, which is this yellow. So I could click on the line and then click on this arrow right here and I could change it to be yellow 
and OK. And now this door should be marked as an unlocked door. And then I could do the same thing. If I had hidden doors, I could make them green. If I had windows in here, I could make them the light blue. Once you've got all of your colors set, then you're going to want to run this command exclamation point PTWOD, which is path to window or door. And then we're going to convert doors and page. And so what this means is we're going to take all of the doors whose colors match what's defined here and switch them to use the new door type. But we're only converting doors on this specific page. So if we have multiple maps that we want to update, we could take this flag off and this would convert all the doors in our game to be the new format based on the colors that are defined here. So it depends on what you want to do. I'm going to go back and just have it be page. So we'll highlight this. We'll copy it. Let's jump over to our chat tab here and I'll paste in the command. And let's minimize this so you can see this in action. Press enter. And we can see now all of our doors have been converted automatically for us. And this one over here that we said to be unlocked is in fact unlocked. Now, you may get this message saying that in order to use doors, you have to enable restrict movement. Do you want us to turn that on for you? Say yes to that. And there we go. And now I've got my door and it is unlocked. All these other ones are locked and everything just happened for me really quick and easy. The command to convert windows is very similar to the one to convert doors. It looks like this. It's just PTWD convert windows. And again, you can do it for an individual page or you can omit that and it will convert for the entire game. Now that's all well and good, but what about a situation where you have already set up your dynamic lighting and the color of the doors is not present in one of these existing color relationships? We don't want to go through and change the color of all of the doors on the map. What we want to do instead is change what color the, say, locked door is going to be set to and then make all of our purple doors that you see on this map into locked doors. So what we want to do is click on the line that represents the door on the dynamic lighting layer and then click on this little arrow right here and that will tell you the color of the line. But the trick here is that the color in roll 20 for this line is given as an RGB value and the script needs it to be a hexadecimal value. So what we're going to do is convert this RGB value into hex using a tool like this one, this RGB to hex color converter, which I will put a link to down in the video description. And so what we want to do here is plug in the RGB value. So it was 153 for our red, zero for our green and 255 for the blue, convert that to hex. We can see that gives us that purple color. I'm going to copy that and then we'll jump back to our game. Okay, so back in the game here, I'm going to make the locked doors that purple color. So I'm just going to click on this and then I'm going to paste in the hexadecimal color that I just copied. Now, the one thing to know about this is that the script expects the hexadecimal value to use lowercase letters, not capital ones. So you want to change these capital F's to lowercase F's, click submit. Now we can see that we're going to be setting all of the purple lines to be locked doors. So now if I run our command again, just paste in the convert doors for this page. There we go. We can see that it's changed all of our purple lines to be locked doors. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you may remember that I did a video on a mod called Door Knocker, which allows you to interact with doors via macros. That mod doesn't support the new versions of doors just yet. But once it does, then I will do another updated video on that mod so that you all can see how it works with this new system. So there you have it. That's how you can set up doors and windows for dynamic lighting in Roll20. I just want to give another quick shout out of thanks to Grosh for putting together that awesome mod. And I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.